Hello, welcome to the Mark Janot Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, we are going to discuss the Linux tier list for 2025. The top tier, good tier, high tier, average, low tier. Don't argue in the comment section, okay? This is what it is. <laughs> so please take a moment right now, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. In the top tier list, Fedora has emerged as the top Linux distribution for 2025 due to several key factors that make it stand out in the ever-evolving Linux ecosystem. You have the cutting-edge technology. Fedora is known for its focus on innovation and upstream contributions to the Linux community. In 2025, it continues to offer the latest Linux kernel and up-to-date software packages, modern technology like BTRFS file system and pipe wire audio system, DNF4, a faster and more efficient package manager balance of stability and innovation. So Fedora strikes an ideal balance between cutting edge features and stability. It provides a stable base while offering relatively up-to-date software. The distribution is reliable enough for daily use while still incorporating the latest innovations also in regards to uh, a user-friendly experience you know Fedora has made significant strides in improving user experience integration of flat hub by default expanding software availability a modern anaconda web UI installer making system setup easier variety of spins catering to different desktop environments and use cases now that's that's that now let's get into the next one Ubuntu is next on the top tier of Linux distros for 2025 because of its stability and long-term support Ubuntu 24.04 24 LTS released in 2024 offers five years of official support, including security updates and bug fixes. We like that. We like that. We like that. This long-term stability makes it an ideal choice for developers working on extended projects and enterprises requiring a reliable platform. Also, performance and compatibility, right? The latest Ubuntu release brings significant improvements in system performance, optimized for both modern and legacy hardware so kernel updates ensure better hardware compatibility making it versatile across different computer systems it's also developer friendly right it has a developer friendly environment so ubuntu comes pre-installed with essential developer tools and supports seamless integration with popular ides uh you know version control systems like git and containerization right uh, platforms like Docker, right? This out of box readiness for development tasks uh, is a major draw for programmers, right? It also has community and enterprise support. You know, we like that. <laughs> You're not just gonna give me something or I'm doing something, I can't do no support, I can't do no support. So Ubuntu boasts a robust community and extensive enterprise backing, providing developers access to a vast ecosystem of resources, tutorials, and forums. This support network is invaluable for troubleshooting and learning. So now that was the top. That was the top, top of the top, top, top of the top, top. Now let's get into the high tier for 2025. We have Linux Mint, which is an excellent Linux distribution, right? Because of the user-friendly experience. And you know, when you have a user-friendly experience when it comes to Linux, you're gonna rank high, right? So Linux Mint offers a Windows-like interface, particularly with its cinnamon desktop environment, making it incredibly accessible for new users transitioning from Windows because you know, Windows we have our, everything is kind of ready for us, right? So don't make it harder for us. We're not gonna come if you make it harder. So it provides a familiar and intuitive experience that helps newcomers feel comfortable with Linux performance and resource. Uh, now, in regards to efficiency, this the, the distribution is known for its low resource consumption, making it ideal for both older and newer hardware. It runs fast and is lighter on system resources compared to other distributions, right? Which is perfect for users with limited computing power. Uh, Linux Mint, despite, however, despite its popularity and stability, it faces several challenges that prevent it from becoming that top tier. And you might be asking why? Well, it's the limited pre-installation, right? One of the most significant barriers to Linux Mint's widespread adoption is the lack of pre-installation on major hardware platforms. 
most consumers prefer not to change their operating system after purchasing a device, making it crucial for Linux Mint to be available out of the box on popular computers. Then you have the technical complexity, right? While Linux Mint is user-friendly compared to many other Linux distributions, it still requires a level of technical literacy that may be challenging for the average user. The need for command line usage and self-reliance in troubleshooting can be intimidating for those accustomed to more mainstream operating system. There's also resource constraint, right? Uh, the Linux Mint development team, along with other smaller Linux desktop teams, faces significant challenges in maintaining and developing a complete ecosystem of applications, which includes forking and maintaining GTK3 versions of apps, developing and maintaining the Cinnamon desktop environment, tweaking the Ubuntu base, right? Maintaining Debian packages, developing their own set of X apps, right? These responsibilities place a heavy workload on a relatively small team, potentially limiting their ability to complete or, or complete, <laughs> complete, no, compete with larger, more resource rich operating systems. Pop exclamation mark underscore OS is next on the high tier list, right? Because, you know, it, it's basically shaping to be an exceptional Linux distribution for 2025, offering a blend of innovation, performance, and user-friendly features that cater to both newcomers and experienced Linux users. Uh, the cosmic desktop environment, right? That That is a standout feature of the Pop exclamation mark underscore OS 24.04. LTS, right, is basically it's the new, in, no, it's the introduction of the new cosmic desktop environment completely rewritten in Rust, right? This, this change brings several benefits like improved performance. The Rust based cosmic promises to be faster and more responsive than its predecessor. There's the enhanced stability. Rust safety features contribute to a more stable desktop in, you know, experience. Modern design, cosmic offers a holistic design system that you know is basically modern and consistent across the software ecosystem gaming capabilities is another one right pop underscore os pop exclamation mark you know underscore os you know continues to excel in the gaming platform space the out of the box gpu support the distribution provides full support for both amd and nvidia gpus hybrid graphics users can easily toggle between battery saving and high powered graphic modes gaming essentials pop exclamation mark underscore os comes preloaded with necessary tools and drivers for gaming pop exclamation mark os while a popular linux distribution is still not in the top right because it faces challenges because you know that prevents it from you know because the, there's development uncertainty the current version of this pop seems to be in a state of limbo with most attention focused on the upcoming cosmic desktop environment this has led to concerns about potential neglect of the existing os and uncertainty about the project's future some users worry that development may halt or the new version might never be completed in regards to stability and performance issues unexpected crashes have been reported affecting system stability the current version is starting to feel outdated with increasing issues related to newer software and application updates some users encounter dependency hell which is a problem that hadn't been common in recent years there's also a limit limited software integration the integrated software equipment uh, is not very extensive the pop shop the distribution software center has faced criticism for its implementation and limitations in installing certain applications like steam right Graphics and multi-monitor support, while Pop OS provides full out-of-the-box support for both AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, some users report issues with multi-screen setups, particularly uh, when using the genome-based environment. Now let's get into the good tier. Open source Tumbleweed is on the good tier section for 2025 uh, because it's due to you know these kind of key features and advantages. 
There is the rolling release model. Tumbleweed provides a stable rolling release, ensuring users always have access to the latest software and kernel updates without the need for major version upgrades. In regards to stability and reliability, despite being a rolling release, Tumbleweed maintains exceptional stability through rigorous testing and quality assurance processes, including the use of open QA automated testing, automated uh, you know, testing and up-to-date software, right? Users benefit from having the most recent kernel drivers and packages, keeping their system current with the latest features and security updates. Now, despite its strength, Tumbleweed is not considered a top-tier Linux distribution because of the lack of widespread adoption, right? OpenSUSE Tumbleweed has a smaller user base compared to more popular distributions like Ubuntu and Fedora. This limited adoption can lead to problems, you know, like you know, basically fewer community resources and third party support, uh, less frequent software updates for certain applications, a smaller pool of users to report and fix bugs. Now, in regards to the average tier, that's let's get out of that. Elementary OS and Zorin OS are considered average because of the limited innovation. Both distributions, while visually appealing, have not shown significant innovation in recent years. Elementary OS continues to focus on simplicity and a Mac OS like interfer like uh, interference interface interface interface, but hasn't introduced groundbreaking features. Zorin OS, despite its user-friendly approach, hasn't substantially evolved beyond its Windows-like interface and app compatibility. In regards to performance concerns, Elementary OS, known for its lightweight nature, may struggle to keep up with more resource-intensive modern applications. Zorin OS, while feature-rich, requires more system resources, potentially limiting its performance on older hardware uh, like yours. And um, <laughs> community and support, Elementary OS has has a smaller user base compared to more popular distributions, which can result in limited community support. Zorin OS, while having a dedicated following, doesn't match the extensive support networks of larger distributions like Ubuntu or Fedora. Now, here's the lower tier, okay? Lower tier. KDE Neon. Now, KDE Neon is considered a lower tier Linux distribution for 2025 because of Stability issues, right? KDE Neon has experienced significant problems with upgrades and system stability, particularly during the transition to a new LTS base and the move to Plasma 6. There's also insufficient testing. The distribution lacks adequate testing and has limited resources dedicated to ensuring a stable and reliable solution inconsistent user experience while kde neon aims to showcase the latest kde technologies it often results in a system that's not suitable for day-to-day -day use due to frequent br um, breakages right and it has an outdated base system kde neon combines bleeding edge kde software with an older lts ubuntu base creating a strange mix that doesn't provide the benefits of either a fully up-to-date system or a stable long-term support release.